Hi everyone, welcome back to your classroom. I'm your host, Thatcher Taylor, for this 33rd installment of the Functional Retirement Podcast. And today we're gonna figure out if your kids are gonna make it go broke in retirement. Now, I've been a little bit hyperbolic there, but it's becoming, I've seen a trend over the past 15 years in the financial services industry about how parents need to help pay for their adult kids more. And I've run into this a couple times recently. And the reason why I think it was important for enough for a podcast episode was because you need to remember this one thing. Every dollar that you give to your adult children is one less dollar that you get to use in your retirement journey. It's one less dollar that you get to spend. So today we're going to talk about what some of the sacrifices are that you're going to need to potentially pay for some of the sacrifices that are going to need to be made to help your adult children. We're going to talk about what parts of your retirement plan could take the brunt of these sacrifices that you're going to have to make. Some of the circumstances that lead to kids needing money. We'll probably talk about that one first and then how to stop from helping your kids to be able to preserve your future. So this conversation is kind of a difficult one. And to be honest, it's lack of a conversation because I'm just talking. It's a podcast. So if you have any questions or comments, please comment them now or send me an email to Thatcher, T-H-A-T-C-H-E-R at propathfinancial.com, P-R-O-P-A-T-H financial.com. I'd love to hear your experiences. And then if you want to follow the full supplemental blog article and video or listen to this, if you're watching this. Go to propathfinancial.com forward slash post forward slash kids help. If you want to see, listen, or read the full supplement, supplementary blog article to this. So let's first find out how they could change your retirement. And it goes back to what I said before. Every dollar that you give away is $1 less that you get to use at some point in your future. So let's rewind the clocks 20 or so years ago. My dad gave me a phone call. He was helping me out a little bit, giving me some monthly money, help pay for his college. And one day he goes, man, you're cut off. And I said, well, that sucks. I don't really know what to do next because now my lifeline's gone. That was a long time ago. Fast forward to today and I'm fully self-sufficient. My father or my parents don't help out with anything. And two things happened with that decision that he made. For whatever reason, he made it. One, it made me self-sufficient to learn how to figure it out. And it didn't come out come with some learning along the way. But two, he got to keep that money. He got to continue to invest it. It got to continue to grow. So every dollar that he saved over two decades ago turned into maybe two or three dollars that he could utilize today. So those decisions matter. Now, let's assume that there are two paths you can go down. In fact, there are essentially three paths. Let's make it three paths. There's one path and two paths that can kind of be split into two paths. So let's say three paths. The first path is a parent that you can make is you decide you're not going to help at all. So if you decide you're not going to help your adult children at all, there's no reason to worry about a lot of this. Your kids are most likely figuring it out or they're pretty good with money at that point. That's most likely what that decision is going to lead to. Whether you can or can't help kind of factors in, but the end result is you're not helping out your adult children at all. The second avenue or road is you're going to help And you're going to sacrifice your retirement a little. You're very, very nice. You love your kids. And I'm not saying in any other situation you don't love your kids, but you are going to go the extra mile and you're going to sacrifice a little bit of your future to give money to your children. That's kind of avenue two. Then there's avenue three that you're going to help because you want to help and you have the means to help and it's all a part of the plan. So you're not going to help you're going to help and you're going to sacrifice your future or you're going to help and you want to help and it doesn't affect the damn thing. So those are kind of the three avenues that you're going to go down. You're going to be thinking through or the situation you're going to be through in is a retirement. And remember through this process, adult children, the adult children that are maybe on the payroll a little bit too long. 
The next element of this discussion is what the heck are we going to need to pay for when it comes to adult kids? And I got a list of things that are probably the most common. There is maybe some nuances in between there. And I'm not really talking about the circumstances. It's, it's not about how they got there. It's about do you need to utilize your funds for this? Now, I know that they're extenuating circumstances. Like some people really get in to trouble financially with things like medical bills, for example, that they have, they're working their tail off, but they got hit or blindsided with these giant medical expenses and you decide to help. You know, there are things like that that come into play. So let's just assume all those personalized circumstances are out of the equation at the moment. Let's just talk about things that you may have to pay for along the way. The first one that's on the top of everybody's mind because of the student loan problem is paying for college. So you need to decide whether or not you want to pay for college. Some numbers is on average for a four year in state, $26,000 is about how much it's going to cost annually. If you want to pay out of pocket, attending with the room, the board, the tuition, the costs, the fees, the books, the nonsense, assume a hundred grand on average. That depends on the school, the state, and a variety of things, but that's the average. A two-year in-state, annually, 3,400 bucks on average. So that's some of the planning that can come into it. Maybe the first couple of years you go to a two year, then you finish it a four year. Regardless, again, around $100,000 is how much you're going to have to pay for a four year in-state school. College is very expensive. We hope that you've planned for college along the way. That comes back to our three avenues where you made the decision. Usually people that want to pay for college, they make that decision pretty early and they start planning and accumulating maybe 529s or custodial accounts, or maybe just taxable brokerage accounts, or maybe even Roth IRAs where they're utilizing a strategy to pay for college. The next thing that you might end up paying for is paying down debt. Now this is variable. I don't have a nationwide average because it could be a variety of different things that come into play when it's debt. It could be student loan debt. It could be consumer debt. It could be medical debt. In the, in the consumer debt, it could be car debt. Maybe it's a business loan for a business that didn't go well. These are some of the more unexpected things that usually a parent finds out along the way like, hey mom, dad, uh, I did this thing and I need some money. That's going to be a little bit different than the college scenario because college is usually prepared for years and years out. Another thing is paying for a wedding. Now, this is usually on people's mind. Historically, people get married and there's a wedding that they're going to have. The national average cost of a wedding in 2023 was about 35,000 bucks. This goes back to the avenue where are you going to pay for that or are you not? Kind of what's going to happen along the way. And we'll talk about some of these strategies later how to incorporate a lot of what I'm talking about now, whether to make the decision now or later, but we'll talk about that in a second. But paying for a wedding on average, 35,000 bucks. Another thing that you may end up paying for is a divorce. Now, this isn't necessarily fees or costs for a divorce. Maybe you will pay some attorney's fees. Usually any assets you have in a divorce get split up in a lot of cases. But again, we're not talking about the nuances. But one thing that could lead to a cost from a divorce is helping a child get back on their feet moving across country, maybe them even living with you. These are some costs that you need to incur along the way if a child gets divorced and you figure out whether or not you're going to pay for that. Another one that's big right now is buying a home, down payments. You need to decide whether or not you're going to be involved in helping your child buy their first house or buy a bigger house or how you want to be involved in that process. But that's going to vary in the amount depending on, again, where you live, buying a house in Oklahoma is going to be different than buying a house in San Francisco or New York City, obviously. Just helping your kids get on feet on their feet with some cash. Maybe they come out of school and they got a good job, but they're just having trouble putting down a deposit on a place. Who knows? Again, I'm I'm even diving into the nuances when I said I wasn't going to dive into the nuances, but sometimes you just got to give your kids some cash to get on their feet. You got to decide whether or not you're going to do that or whether you have the means for that. Another way that you're going to help is potentially taking care of grandkids. 
I have clients that are babysitters right now for grandkids. So you need to start to decide whether or not you're going to be involved in that at all. So in preparing for this, I found some interesting stuff. I'm going to link this article from Bankray. There's a survey that went out that I thought was very interesting. There was a survey about at what age do you think a person should start paying for each of the following items or bills on their own? So we've talked about some of the big, the major expenses that you're going to have to potentially pay for, but there are some other little things that you might end up paying for that you need to decide whether or not you want to be involved with. And these are in association with age. So the average age for a car payment is 20. We're going to cut you off at 20 on car payments. You got to take care of that yourself. On the survey, car insurance is 20 also because it goes hand in hand with the car payments. Cell phone bill is 20. Subscri subscription services, cable, Netflix, uh, any of the streaming services is t age 20. That's the average. Credit card bills is also 20. You can see those five areas, some of the regular expenses that we all incur age 20, kind of midway through college. We gave you a couple of years to get you started, but now we're cutting you off. You got to figure it out. Travel costs, age 21. I don't know why they chose 21, but I, again, that was just the average. Housing costs, age 22. That's about the time you get out of college. We're not going to pay for your housing anymore. Health insurance is age 23, which is funny because you can be on a parent's health insurance till 26, but I just thought that was interesting. And then student loans is age 23. So they're basically saying at age 23, you got to start taking care of your student loans as well. So those are some more of the intermediary costs. You could throw student loans back into what we talked about above and some of the debt payments that you may have to make. But again, it's deciding how deep you want to be involved in this. And it's about setting expectations. That's kind of the second golden egg that we'll talk about here in just a second. So when it comes to paying for some of these, where are you going to do it from? What are going to be the resources that you're going to have to use, the sacrifices that you're going to have to make to pay for some of these bills? Number one, you're going to withdraw from savings. You got money in cash or at the bank, and you're just going to have to withdraw it and make the payments, help your kids out. We're off to the races. Two, withdrawing from emergency funds. I categorize that because when I work with my clients, I split those up, savings and emergency funds. Some people are going to dip into their emergency funds. We'll talk about that here in just a second, how substantial that is. You're going to withdraw from investments. You're going to have assets that have appreciated over the years, whether they're hopefully taxable accounts like a trust or a joint account that you're going to sell off some stuff and you're going to pay for whatever you need to. Withdrawing from retirement accounts, not advisable in most cases because depending on your age, there could be taxation and penalty associated with it depending on the type of account. That's that's a problem. We want to try to avoid that. The next sacrifice you may make is maybe a less initially monetary, but maybe having your kids live with you. It's more common to be having kids, adult kids living with their parents. That's going to be freedom. You're sacrificing your freedom, your time, your independence, your bills, your utilities, and you're not making them pay rent. They're living with you for free. That's a cost that you could utilize. Another sacrifice that could be made, depending on how big the expenses are, is you're delaying your retirement. Say it was a really big goal for you to retire at 62, but you're starting to pay for some of these expenses. You got to start pushing off retirement a year or two. Now we got a problem that we got to really address. That's how this starts to lead into retirement is because the more money you pull from these different accounts, savings, emergency funds, investments, those are all allocated, hopefully within a retirement plan. You're adjusting the plan to help out with kids if you don't set it up initially within the plan. You're making very difficult adjustments. That limit, say you're taking money from your emergency funds, that limits your preparedness for retirement. You're taking your emergency funds that you may need in the event of catastrophe when you're starting to retire now that you don't have an income. Every dollar given is $1 less that you get to use in retirement. Sometimes there's not much impact. Maybe you have done a good job saving or you have high income and giving your child $20,000 is no big deal. In some circumstances, there could be a win for both where if they're living with you and they pay some rent, that could help pay down your mortgage. So there's some things that could come into play there that make it a win for you. Or maybe you just really want your kids to stay with you and you love it. And who knows? I don't know. But those are some of the sacrifices that could come into play if you don't prepare for them up front. 
Now, to add a little context on what some of those sacrifices may be from the same bank rate, the same survey, there was some data that says nearly one in five parents have significantly sacrificed savings to pay down debt or to help in a financial hardship or milestone to help their adult kids with money. One in five parents. So one in five of you listening that are parents with kids are going to have to significantly sacrifice your savings or investments, your retirement savings to help with the kid. Retirement savings was the big place it came from. Emergency savings was a big one. Paying down debt. So limiting your not only your ability to pay down debt, but helping to pay down your kid's debt. Reaching some other financial milestones is the next category, which could be paying for a mortgage, which limits your ability to maybe prepare for your retirement. So depending on the size of the payment or the amount of money that you give to the children, the impact could definitely vary. Let's say a $50,000 payment to a kid for, let's say a down payment on a house. I mean, I know that's a big number, but if you have $3 million in retirement, that's far less impactful than let's just say you have $750,000 in retirement. So you need to evaluate, here's another golden egg, an Easter egg on this. Happy Easter, by the way. You need to evaluate your position in this process and how much you could realistically help them with. So going back to what we talked about in the beginning, the three avenues, you're not going to help at all. You're going to help and it's going to hurt you, or you're going to help and it's not going to matter at all. You've kind of wanted to help. You got to start working through the process of deciding the role that you're going to play in helping your adult children and educating the adult children on the role and why. So how to stop from helping or how to set the expectations on the transition from helping can work through three different areas. One, you're going to decide whether or not you do or don't want to. So it could be as early as setting the expectation with the children, I'm not going to help. You got to figure it out along the way and you got to make sure to be good with money. You're going to decide flat out, I'm not helping. I don't have the money. I'm sorry. We're going to work through this together. And that decision usually doesn't come cold turkey. The people that are making that decision, we would like to think that along the way, you're helping to educate your children on money. Things like credit cards, student loans, mastering their craft, working through college and starting to pay off debt so it doesn't accumulate and maybe starting to invest along the way. So you're starting to educate them and set them up for that transition. The next thing you can do is give them a runway. I'm going to stop paying for you and your life in three years or five years or one year. So you're developing a runway to prepare them so it's not a sudden change. You still may be exacerbating the issue by giving them some time before the cutoff where they're really going to latch on and get as much out of you as you can. But again, this comes with education, setting the right right expectations, cultivating a good relationship around money is going to be a really valuable add-on before that cutoff date. Or you could set up a specific event. This is kind of the third place is not just a runway, a period of time where there's not much of a time based, but there's more of hey, when you get a promotion, we're going to cut you off. Or when you're out of school, we're going to cut you off. And you don't have to say cut you off. I'm just using that kind of drastically. But when you get married, we're going to cut you off. Or after X, Y, or Z, you're done. So there's not necessarily a time associated with it, but it's more of an event-based methodology. So you don't have to use this cold turkey. But any one of these processes, one, two, or three, you need to help work with your kids on being smarter around money. You know what that also means? You need to be smarter around money. Regardless of how much money you think you have, there's always ways to be a little bit more fine-tuned in your knowledge around money. To wrap this up, if you haven't noticed, I've been leaving some nuggets, some trails, some breadcrumbs along this path in this podcast. And the point of all this is planning. The way people get in trouble with a lot of these items, not just paying for kids, but preserving or ruining potential retirement preservation strategies, 
is you don't plan. You don't think through this. You don't come up with the courage to be able to start taking advantage of different strategies. What if you could have avoided any college debt by preparing for college along the way? What if you could have avoided too big of bills when you couldn't afford it by going to two years of college in the beginning and then transferring and going to the final four year school along the way? You could go to JUCO, junior college for two years, and then we just moved from Arizona. Then you could go to Arizona State for two years and your degree says Arizona State. The first two years are just prerequisite classes anyway. What if you could have prepared along the way to minimize costs? What if after college, you started paying your student loans back right away? What if you didn't accumulate consumer debt by buying things you couldn't afford? What if your children did the same thing? What if you started investing at an early age? What if you started working and saving money along the way? Having good habits along the way, not only for the adult and the children are important, but setting the proper expectations and communicating through all these different elements of money are going to be able to set you up for success down the road. What if you and your spouse had a conversation? Hey, what if we need to pay for some of these things, a wedding, a down payment, maybe some student loan debt? What if you were able to set aside 50 grand over 20 years? to be able to pay for some of these things for your children. You had the expectation that that was going to happen. And along the way, you were telling your kids, I'll help pay for A, B, or C, but I'm not going to pay for anything else. So you need to make a decision or you could just allocate. I got 50 grand allocated for you. You can use it for whatever you want, but that is it. There's a variety of things that could be purchased or paid for along the way, but it's about education and developing a good relationship around money. That doesn't mean you have to lay out your entire financial picture to your children, but helping to get on the same page. What you can do for the unexpected to plan for it is, man, I have a feeling that I'm going to have to help out along the way. So let's try to set aside some money in the event of an emergency to help out our children. That could just be built into your financial plan in your emergency fund for retirement. Remember, there is no retirement bailout. There aren't retirement loans. You don't get to at age 65, go to a bank. Hey, I'm going to retirement. I want a retirement loan to finance your retirement. You finance your retirement off the hard work and money saved along the way. Student loans, they can be financed and pay back over time. They can be a burden, but if you tack them properly, you can get rid of them in a reasonable amount of time. But there is no financing retirement. There is not anyone coming to save you where you're going to have to go back to some of those sacrifices where maybe you're going to sacrifice your lifestyle, your home, your retirement start date, or a variety of things in between. So make sure if you want to help your adult kids, or if you don't want to help your adult kids, you're setting the expectations to forego any problems at some point in the future. If you need help with this, in your comprehensive retirement plan. If your advisor is not talking about this, you haven't dove into this, please reach out to me, propathfinancial.com. I'll put a link below. Please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. I appreciate you watching and listening. Can't wait to see you next time. Hope this was helpful. See ya.